and it's going. <laughs> I was just about to say that, that recording is going to be in progress. I don't know if you've been in a sermon where you listen to a sermon and you actually feel that the preacher is just sort of getting at you. You know that feeling? You know, sort of, oh, they've, they've got it in for me. And yes, to some extent that, that can happen. But one of the big dangers of, in preaching is when you think, oh, I think the church needs to hear this because I don't think they're doing it right. And that isn't the goal of preaching. You know, the goal of preaching is always Jesus always when we look at jesus's preaching it says he he taught with authority but it just struck me he taught so for a lot of people preaching is the only time they are taught about god's word you know, they might come to church, but do they come to Bible study? You know, are they taught in any other place in church? So we need to remember that first and foremost, Jesus taught. And sometimes his, his teaching was surprising. He told stories. You know, sometimes he asked questions. Um, now, I've been in one church where you, if you ask a rhetorical question, they will answer it. <laughs> and will heckle you to boot as well. They're a fantastic uh, little church. But yes, one of the goals is to teach. Yeah, because people in our congregations, it might be the only time that they will actually hear God's word expounded. Secondly, it's informing. Now, I have a, unfortunately, I did a whole sermon once on the woman at the well. It would have helped if I'd got my, my chemistry right. Because at the end of this long sermon, I said, and thank God he gives us the gift of CO2. Carbon dioxide instead of water. Yeah, we are informing. So if we are informing, make sure that our facts are right. You know, it is we thank God for water and not carbon dioxide. Well, we do thank God for carbon dioxide, but that wasn't the point. <laughs> you know, get our facts right. But then sometimes we have to look at our sermons and think, how will this sermon help others? Is there a pastoral element in it? And pastoring isn't just making people feel good but it is meeting deep needs so I can remember listening to a hell and high water sermon where the preacher was condemning everyone that hadn't said the sinner's prayer to hell and I knew that there were three people in the congregation who had just been bereaved you know how do we you know when we're preaching we are also you've also got that pastor's heart that needs to say how are we helping you know how do we under how do we help them understand that god loves them you know, that is the ultimate thing of pastoring. And then we encourage. I once did a, 
whole sermon, we were talking in the chat room earlier about um, hymns. I did a whole sermon once on my least favorite hymn, which is trust and obey. Because the second verse says, not a tear can abide while we trust and obey. Well, try saying that to someone who's just been bereaved. It doesn't work. And we looked at Psalm 13 and that God is big enough to, to take the punches and for us to say, how long? And one lady came up to me after the service and she said, I felt guilty for grieving my husband. But now I've got permission to lament. You know, so actually, yes, there is an encouragement in uh, preaching. Challenging. Try and encourage people to read scriptures themselves. Because believe it or not, preachers and even the best of us can get it wrong. So we need to read and check scripture ourselves, make sure it's right. But yes, it's, there is that challenge. How are we going to challenge people in our sermon to live more Christ-like lives? And then there's a prophetic act with um, speaking truth to power, um, the Pink Floyd song, Comfortably Numb. You know, how, how, do we, how do we get into, scripture is sometimes subversive. How do we, how do we stir it up? Because some of the best um, sermons are a bit of a stirring pot. They make us uncomfortable. And then there's leadership. We're leading the people through a journey in the scriptures. You know, we're always preaching to ourselves. My husband always says, when I, when I preach, I'm pointing there, but there's, there's five fingers pointing back at me. So we're preaching to ourselves. And that means we've got to demonstrate what we're preaching about in our own lives. It's not just words. Because ultimately preaching is all about transformation. The goal of preaching is that we want to see ourselves and others more like Jesus. Yeah, so it's a step on the way from being changed from glory into glory. Yeah, we, it, that's the goal. So yes, there's, there's a lot of goals within it. I mean, one goal people say, oh, you need a good sermon for evangelism. And yes, there is that. But actually people aren't going to, going to come to faith through a sermon unless they've seen the sermon enacted in our own lives. So yes, we want people to come to know Christ. Um, we are not all Billy Grahams. You know, we are not, but we are all witnesses. Um, I once preached, went to preach in a little church where they didn't have a minister. And afterwards, the, the church secretary said to me, Oh, thank you so much. We were getting so fed up of being told that we needed to be saved. They had all been saved for about 50 years. And they were just, they just wanted to be taught how to live as saved Christians, not that they needed to be saved. So, yes, it's, it's there's a tension there. Sometimes a sermon will focus on one of those things. And sometimes it will focus on all of those things. Intention. It depends very much on the, the text that we're reading. You know, and we said last week, start with the Bible. You know, start with the text, read the text, ponder the text. What's it saying? 
go back to the text and see what forms the sermon will come out. You know, some texts are pastoral. Other texts are challenging. So it's just recognizing that in the word that you're reading from and then going forward. Okay. I think that's, I've given you enough information in less than 10 minutes, I think. <laughs>